Next, when the beast using the authority of the Roman Empire, Constantine set up the image of Rome. The image of the beast was given its own authority to act independently of Rome and any who refused to recognize its authority was it or killed. You can easily go to the web and see these early councils establishing power for the church at Rome, making them the only ones who could appoint bishops, who could remove cler clergy, and, and who were in authority. The Council of Nicaea, legally under authority of Rome and her emperor, established the Roman church as the only church and no other. Now Christ established his church, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, and Rome established their church. Revelation 13, 14 through 15 says, And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Now this solidifying of the emperor's power and his granting authority to a centralized church of Rome can easily be shown by reading the first Nicene Council and sundry other re resources. The Nicene Council ordered the church to stop observing the festival which observes Lord Yeshua's death. Passover. Did you get that? The Nicene Council ordered the church to stop doing the Passover, which Lord Yeshua ordered his church to keep. The Lord told us to remember his death at Passover by eating the unleavened Passover bread as his body and the third cup of Passover wine as his blood of the new covenant. 1 Corinthians 11, 24 through 26, Paul tells us. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Now later at Rome... The Nicene Council instituted instead an observance of the resurrection of Lord Yeshua. Such a thing scripture, nor Lord Yeshua, nor any apostle ever commanded, nor is there any record found in scripture to support such a change in observance. They forced the church to abandon Passover, which is God's mark on the hand and forehead, and replaced it with an Easter observance. The, the idea that surrendering Passover to keep Easter is a choice we must, must make. It's just not correct. Passover is the feast that marks you as belonging to God, and God writes that. The argument that the church must change to Easter is a misleading invention created by the image of the beast in order to hide the real intention. The intention was to suppress the mark of God and begin instituting or setting up the mark of the beast. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And remember what Revelation said, and he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in the right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man may buy or sell. Say he, he who had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of, his, of the name. Of course, people keeping the Sabbath can't buy and sell, but if you have the mark of the beast... You can. You see, because there's no prohibition today against buying and selling on Sunday. But if you keep the seventh day, there is. No man can buy or sell, save he who had the mark of the beast. The name of the setting up of the first part of the mark of the beast is called by church authorities and the church record as Quarto de Semens. That means the controversy of the 14th, because Passover comes on the 14th of Nisa. This word means the controversy of the 14th, and it's incorrectly stated to be an argument setting the correct day of Easter, which it's not. Instead, it is an attempt to bury Passover and bring into the entire church the keeping of the pagan Easter, whose name itself is the anglicized Ishtar. And that's according to Lanyard, the archaeologist Lanyard, when he was uh, just 
uh, working in Babylon in the in the in the in the in the relics there. He found the name Ishtar. That's Easter, if you pronounce it in English. And this misstatement is intended to make you take your eyes off the fact that the image of Rome was desperately trying to end the celebration of Passover and bring in Easter Sunday. This was finally accomplished by bringing the church under the power of the image of the beast and giving the image its own power and voice. The beast now lived. Revelation 13:15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Having first set up the conditions for the church to worship the empire, emperor by worshiping the image of the Roman emperor, that would be the office we now call Pope, they enacted the power of the image by first setting up the image of the beast and then giving that image more and more power till it finally had absolute power over the church. Power to imprison, power to kill, power over personal property, over kings, over armies. Which brings us to the second part of the mark of the beast on the hand or the forehead. The keeping of the day that marks God as our, as our creator and which visibly marks us as belonging to God was replaced with Sunday the day dedicated to the Roman sun god, the Roman sun sabbath. And this finishes marking those doomed for the beast. The setting up of Rome Sunday and eliminating God's sabbath. The second phase took part at the council of Laodicea in, in 364. The church council of Laodicea ordered that religious observances were to be conducted on Sunday, not Saturday, Sunday became the new Sabbath. They ruled Christians shall not Judaize and be idle on Saturday, but shall work on, their, on that day. And there are many indicators in the historical record that some Christians ignored the church rulings. Sabbath observance was noted in Wales as late as 1115 A.D. And Francis Xavier was concerned about Sabbath worship in Goya, India. In 1560 CE, he called for an inquisition to set up an office there to stamp out what he called Jewish wickedness. A Catholic provincial council suppressed the practice in Norway in 1431. Jewish wickedness. The Lord Yeshua kept the Sabbath all of his life. They're saying he was wicked. Jewish wickedness. The Apostle Paul kept the Sabbath. Jewish wickedness. The Apostle Peter kept the Sabbath. Jewish wickedness, according to the image of the beast. Now do you see who they serve? After this event, the mark was fully set up. The Feast of Unleavened Bread, ordered by God, that marked the believer for God, was replaced with the keeping of Resurrection Sunday, which marked you as belonging to the beast. The mark of the beast was fully set up, and almost all of the opposition was killed or imprisoned. And being unable to send their testimony down to us today, and the Bible, God's word in the New Testament, was hidden away in a dead language that few could read in Latin for 1,000 year dark age. Those who did discover the truth were hunted and killed like cattle. They were imprisoned and burned at the stake. And this continued until the Reformation when Martin Chemnitz took the Catholic priest Martin Luther's writings and began the Protestant Church in Europe. The Pontifex Maximus of Rome said about those Protestant protesters, they protest, but they do. What was it they continued to do? They continued to wear, the Protestants continued to wear the mark of the beast instituted at Rome by the image of the beast so long ago. Don't follow them, my friends. Listen to the inspired words spoken so long ago by a true prophet of God. Joshua 24, verses 14 through 15. Now therefore, fear the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now go and serve the Lord. Give back the mark of the beast to the image of the beast. And wear the mark of God proudly on your hand or upon your forehead. My prayers go with you. May God go with you, friends. Amen.